forest plays a key role in life as we know it today, from regulating our oxygen and carbon cycles around the globe to reducing air pollution significantly to being a home to over 10 million different species. Despite the undeniable significance to the modern-day human's well-being, the Amazon contains a rich and detailed history that we are still attempting to unravel today. Each year, new technology, new discoveries and new research sparks more discussion, and we find out a little bit more about this rainforest. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three Amazon jungle discoveries. Network of Amazon Villages Modern, advanced, remote laser scanners have revealed a network of ancient villages hidden deep within the Amazon rainforest. Archaeologists did know that there was a series of villages within the Amazon prior to this new research, but the advancement of geodetic technology has allowed us to deepen our knowledge, finding some new information regarding the locations and arrangements of various settlements, as well as the way in which they are organized. These new discoveries have been made through the help of LiDAR scanning technology. This tech has a broad range of uses. You'll find it within your iPhone, but it also has played a key role in archaeological discoveries, such as this one. One researcher on this project, Jose Iriarte, explained that even though equipment such as satellites were in place over the area, these roads and villages went undetected by them. This shift away from the classic archaeological techniques, namely excavation, has been a time saver, saving the need to physically dig and clear out these sites. The LiDAR sensors had been mounted on helicopters which scoured the sky, covering the area containing these villages, roads and settlements. These connections save money, time and labour of an excavation, despite this being the sturdy go-to archaeological method. This new equipment provides excellent opportunities for areas that may not be particularly accessible on foot. The new groundbreaking research that has followed since the employment of the latest technology is the dating of these villages. These settlements have been determined to date back between AD 1300 to 1700 and are seemingly positioned according to the stars, as they hold a strong resemblance to what is referred to as Native American space. Each village appears to be centred around what has been referred to as mounds. These villages appear to have anywhere between 3 and 32 mounds, some reaching 20 metres in length and 3 metres in height. Some of these have maintained a rounded shape, whilst others appear to be rectangular, increasing the questions about these mounds. Despite comparisons with other villages with mounds, we remain uncertain as to their purpose. Some have suggested they were simply homes. Some have suggested they were reserved for members of the community of great importance. Other explanations have included suggestions that they may be a religious establishment or it has been said that these mounds could even be cemeteries. The LiDAR technology has also found roads connecting each of these villages. The majority of these settlements had at least four roads, main roads and secondary minor roads heading both north and south. As of yet, 36 villages have been surveyed. There has been a great discrepancy regarding the distance between each one, with some being miles apart and others just three kilometers away. The questions that have been raised after this discovery may lead to physical excavations to try and solve some of the mysteries we have been left with. We are struggling to piece together the puzzle, with too much of a gap in each piece of history. Now we know that an excavation may help to complete these unanswered questions. Whilst these helicopter scans are useful, we have to consider this preliminary research. The LiDAR technology has allowed us to locate and map out certain structures in dense, difficult to read areas, but there's still plenty of research left to go before we can find the answers to our questions. One of the oldest burial sites in the Amazon. Researchers believe they have stumbled across what may be the oldest burial site yet discovered in the southwest Amazonia, tucked away within northern Bolivia in the Llanos de Moxos region of the Amazon rainforest. This site contains graves that are estimated to be a minimum of 6,000 years old and presumed to be older. 
Buried here are five humans, as well as the shells of snails and the bones of fish and various mammals. This discovery is more important, as they believe this site was created 6,000 years ago, which entirely changes the timeline of when we believed people had begun to build settlements within the Amazon. The site was found on the forest islands, situated in Ia del Tosoro, La Chacra and San Pablo. An excavation and further study led many researchers to believe that these so-called forest islands provided a safe asylum and a point of refuge to ancient Amazonians fleeing the flooded Llanos de Moxos savanna throughout the rainy season, making these islands seasonal settlements. This discovery has also given insights into the sophistication of these societies, as burials of this sort along with the traces of food remains and of fires having burned, have implications of a settled society protecting their territories. Before this discovery, we had been operating under the assumption that the people living in this region were hunter-gatherers, though this updated perspective suggests a series of more complex societies instead. This means our timeline could have been 10,000 years out, meaning these groups and societies were established and complex far earlier than we originally thought. Lead author of the study, Jose M. Caprié, assistant professor at Penn State University, explained that these burials tells us that the indigenous groups within the Amazon had learned to adapt and transform the landscape in beneficial and suitable ways. These signify far more advanced living standards than we had predicted were possible at this time. Furthermore, the discarding of waste, be it food or what was once living, and then returning to stay in the area as a seasonal settlement, meant that the soil composition had been changed slightly, becoming more fertile. This allowed for thicker growth of vegetation and higher land elevation. Jose M. Caprié elaborates, explaining that when their preferred food sources and supplies ran low, the indigenous populations were able to domesticate plants, including peanuts and sweet potatoes. This excelling knowledge meant that only mere generations later, societies capable of establishing roads were prevalent. Caprié concludes his research, explaining that the study of these landscapes helps us to see the interaction between humans and these biomes, and gives us an insight into the cultural and biological diversity that is rife within them. A new species of electric eel found in the waters of the Amazon basin. The Amazon is home to many strange and wonderful creatures, though this new species of eel discovered in the Amazon basin is more terrifying than cute. Dubbed the planet's most powerful electric eel, this creature biologically referred to as Electrophorus volti is capable of delivering an 850 volt shock. Until this discovery, the most powerful known electric eel had been able to send a 650 volt shock to its victims. For a frame of reference, the human body often fails to withstand a 200 volt shock, and defibrillators often range between 200 and 1000 volts. David D. Santana, lead research of the project at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, explains how these eels can easily grow up to 8 feet long. He continues to explain that for such a large creature to remain undetected for 250 years of active searching, there must be multitudes of species we simply don't know exist in the Amazon. We are currently aware of 250 species of fish that can produce electricity in South America alone. Electric eels, which are in fact fish that simply resemble an eel's appearance, are the only fish that actively hunt and defend themselves with their electricity. The others reserve their electricity to communicate and navigate, an ability the electric eel also takes advantage of. The collaboration between De Santana's Smithsonian team and researchers from the University of Sao Paulo Museum of Zoology has begun to aid investigations into the diversity of eels and electric fish in South America. The 850 volt Electrophorus volti eel may have been the star of the show, living in the south of the Brazilian Shield, but another species of electric eel, Electrophorus vari, has been found too, swimming in murky lowland waters compared to Electrophorus volti preferred highland region. 
This research has also refined existing knowledge, confirming that the Electrophorus electricus remains only in the Highland Guyana Shield, despite previous assumptions of the eel being distributed throughout South America. De Santana conducted genetic analyses on the two eel groups, revealing that their evolutionary differences appear to have begun several million years ago, believed to be 3.6 million years ago. The high voltage has been explained to be a result of an evolutionary adaptation to highland waters having a low conductivity. This wide difference in their evolution means their means to conduct electricity, referred to as electrogenesis, may never have been studied before. De Santana explains that a possible different use of enzymes and various compounds may present us with an opportunity for medicinal advancements and new technology. Ancient civilizations throughout the Amazon have been a keen focus of study for years. Though continuing to keep these societies within our research can only help develop our understanding of the role of humans in forming the Amazon as we know it today. The home of over 10 million species is bound to have some more animals and plants hidden within the 5.5 million kilometers squared of trees and waters that we simply have not found yet. But what do you make of these Amazon jungle discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working